Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to create grainy, vibrant shapes in Illustrator. Now, there's been a trend going on for a while where we see different kind of shapes having a motion kind of a blur to it and with really nice gradients. So we'll be creating exactly just that. But before we jump into today's video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell button so that you get updated with all my latest videos. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So right off the bat, what we'll be doing is we are going to create our new document over here. As you can see, I've already created it. And for the size, I'll be going with 1920-2080 for this one. And as you can see that I have a palette of colors over here. Um, these are the colors that I'll be using while uh, the uh, entire video for the shapes that I'll be creating. So first and foremost, we're going to start by creating a background for our shapes. Now the background is also going to be a bit different. So I'm going to get, get my rectangle tool first. I'm going to create a shape, which is exactly 1920 And then what I'll be doing is I'll be using this color over here from the color palette. And don't you worry because I'll be also linking down all the colors, all the color codes in the video itself. So you can have a look at the colors from there itself. So the first color, when I choose this color, I have something like that, as you can see. And I'll be naming this as my background because I'll be locking this layer once I'm done. And then what I'll be doing is with this background color, I'm going to apply some kind of distortion to it so it has some kind of noise going on it'll have this nice retro vibe to it so let's go apply that so we'll first of all what we'll be doing is we'll be selecting our layer over here as you can see it's called background right now and then i'll be going to my effect and then we're gonna look for distort and then we're gonna go for diffuse glow now okay it's on my other screen for some reason so Okay, as you can see, the disc diffuse glow over here, it has three stuff, three properties, which is the graininess, glow amount, and clear amount. So if you bring down the clear amount, as you can see that it's going to become bright like that. So what, we do not want that. What we're going to do is we're going to push it all the way back to 20. And then we're just going to play with the graininess because let's say if you play with the glow amount, if you notice the edges, it'll just have add a glow to it on the edges basically that's what it does now we're just gonna pay attention to the graininess so now as you can see when we increase the graininess we have some kind of graininess over here as you can see and it looks it is already giving us kind of a, a retro vibe to it so i'm gonna stick with let's see i don't want it to be that visible as well i want it to be subtle so probably around three Let's see how it looks like. All right, so this is good enough for me. So I'm gonna stick with that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock this layer up so that we do not mess with it anymore. Now we're gonna create another layer where we're gonna mess and create our shapes. Now, the first and foremost, for this one, I'm gonna create a random shape. So um, I, I don't know, like you can go nuts with what kind of shapes you wanna create. I wanna create something like an shaped like an onion so i'm just gonna create something like an onion so yeah i have my onion over here as you can see right now and then the next thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna apply the gradient first so starting with that i'm gonna hit my gradient over here and when you hit your gradient make sure you are selecting this layer make sure inside the layer this path is selected and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the gradient and see, notice how there are three kind of types. The first one is called linear gradient. The second one is called radial gradient. And the last one is called freeform gradient. Now we're gonna work with freeform gradient. And if you notice when you apply the freeform gradient, gradient over here, there are two gradient uh, colors over here, basically two spots or two points as you can call it. One is white and one is black. And you see how the blending works over here. It's really nice. I really like this effect. It's used a lot as well. So, and the fun fact about this is that you can also create more, many more points to it, as many as you want to. So right now I'll stick with four. So I'll select the first one, get my eyedropper or color picker, and then select the first color over here. 
that's what I have these colors here for. And then the second color, I'll be choosing this one. The next color, I'll be choosing this one. And last but not least, I'll be choosing this one. Notice how I already have a really nice gradient over here with different colors and it looks amazing. Now, after we do this, I don't actually like the pointiness of this onion, so I'm gonna make it, you know, I, I whenever I see pointy stuff, I just feel like it's sharp. It's not friendly to me in design. So yeah, I always like to have that border radius. Anyway, so what we'll be doing next is we're gonna go to our effect. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to simply come to blur and then we're gonna add radial blur to this layer. And when you notice I have the radio blur open, I have different blur method and then the quality. For quality, I'll just go with best right now. And then there are two different blur methods. We're gonna be talking about both of them. So for the first one, we're gonna go with spin. I'm gonna tell you why we're gonna go with spin in a while. So I'm gonna also choose the spin around maybe 50. Let's go around 50. All right, press okay. And then you see that it creates this amazing effect where this you feel like it's actually moving. So once we have that done, we achieved something like this with the spin blur over here. Now we're going to be trying to do something with zoom. Okay, the next use case would be to create a circle for this. So I'll go and create, select this ellipse tool and make sure I have shift press on my keyboard press and hold, left click and create a circle to create a perfect circle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to select the type of gradient we have over here. So we're going to go with the gradient again and then we have four points as we can see. So for this one, I'm going to go with this point first. I'm going to select this color. I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to go select the one. I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to select this. And last but not least, this one, we're gonna go for this color. Pretty great. And we can also, if you've lost the points, do not worry about it. We can deselect it, select it back, just go to edit gradient. You don't have to even choose this freeform gradient, just edit gradient, and then you'll get your points back. I don't want this one for an instance, so I'm just gonna click on this delete stop, and then it'll remove it from me. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually bring this point over here. I don't want the, yeah, I want it to be something like this. And with this thing, you can also go nuts. So like you can also increase the radius of your color gradient so that you can go reach more of the radius over there. But I do not want to do that for this one. But you can also play with how close should they be. So if you see when they're that close, there's this kind of an effect in between them which looks like if you're almost folding the colors. So yeah, I'll be putting it just like that for now. And you see it has this kind of a nice 3D effect to it as well. Now I'm gonna go select it. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go for blur. I'm gonna go for radial blur again. Now this time, we won't be working with spin. Why won't we be working with spin? Because this is a circle. So if you apply this method, let's say, it won't make much of a difference. It just blends the color a bit more because you added the blur, but it does not add any kind of, you know, effect like blur to it. So it's not that understandable. Like for an instance, this spin has a motion, so it looks nice. So what we will be doing is when we'll be applying this radial blur, this time we'll be selecting zoom. So when you select zoom and hit enter, you'll see that there's this kind of a glow effect on the outer box so that's what we want to achieve now the next thing what we're going to do is to make it have like a film burn kind of an effect in these colors and have that grainy effect on the shapes as well from the background what we're going to do is the trick is quite simple we're just going to select one of these layers for an instance and we're going to go to our transparency mode oops i hit my bar over here okay so i'm going to go back to gradient hit the transparency mode I'm gonna go select over here. We're gonna go select difference. Now, once we select the difference, as you can see over here, there's like a nice film burn kind of thing going on to it. And if you zoom in, you can see that you also have that grain effect to it. 
that looks pretty dope. Now, we're gonna also do the same for this. Go to difference and hit it like that. Just to see how big of a difference that it makes. Like, it, that's a drastic change. So if you actually duplicate this and go back to normal, you see how this looks and this gives a really nice retro vibe to it. I love that. So I'm gonna delete this layer. Um, then what I'll be doing is you can also play around with shapes, merging them together. Now what I mean by this is like if I bring this shape over here, you can see it makes it, it creates a new color and it looks just amazing. So you can honestly, you know, play with your creativity around, create new colors and different kind with different kind of shapes. So let's say if I didn't want to make an onion shape, I would want to make some kind of a different shape. I could do that too. And then I just go here and I apply the gradient again and then I just choose the colors for instance I'm gonna come over here pick the first color and then the second and then the third and then the fourth great and now I'm just gonna move them around play tweaking a bit oh, oops. So if you notice when I go out of the border it just disappears because you won't put it because it's not inside the shape. So make sure it's inside the shape as well. And then, uh, okay, I'm gonna see what I can do. Yeah, I like this color. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is you just go to effects, you go to blur, radial blur. Now if you apply zoom to this one, this will just have a same, similar effect to this circle. It will just have that kind of a glowing effect on the outer edge. We do not want that, we're gonna go with spin. Probably not that much because the handle is too big. And then you see we have another kind of color over here, which also looks great. I'm gonna change its transparency to difference and you can play around with it, see what you achieve. The next one we're gonna do is we're gonna also create another circle. And I'm just going to duplicate this for that. I just pressed alter and then I duplicated it. I'm just going to now change the colors. So I'm just going to hit edit gradient, pick the color, pick the color picker and just change my colors. That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to delete this extra one that we have over here. Okay. I think I deleted the wrong one. Did I? Okay. Yeah, I did. So then I'll just bring these nearby so that the color is more visible, more vibrant to me. And that's pretty much it that you need to do because we have already the effect applied to this one. But yeah, so just to show you what we can do with this kind of colors and all, I'm just gonna, I just had an idea in my mind. So I'm gonna bring in Nike's logo over here. And as you can see that we have the famous logo uh, why did I choose Nike again? I don't know. I love Nike. I love Phil Knight. I've read his book, Shoe Dog. You guys should try it out if you haven't. And I am also currently reading Brett Hoffman's book about emotions with design. Or design with emotion, I forgot, my bad. But yeah, amazing. So that's why I'm a big sneakerhead. I love Nike and I will forever be checks over stripes. So yeah, that's me. That's why I love to create anything with Nike because they're just so aesthetic to me. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is this is an SVG. I'm also going to attach the image in the project. So what we're going to do is right now, we're just going to go image dress and then we're going to just create a black and white logo. And once it's done, you're just going to expand it. Once it's expanded, we're just gonna right click, we're gonna ungroup so that both layers are ungrouped. Now we're gonna delete image. If, if, if you notice, there's one, the background and then the logo itself, of course. So we're gonna delete the background. We have a little bit of it, of it over here. Now what we can do is, since it's a logo now, we created from SVG, we can change its color, technically go nuts with it. Now, what we will be doing is we are going to create a gradient with this in the same way. And I'll have three points, one over here, I guess, one over here, and the last one over there. And something of this sort. Now, this one looks nice to me. I'm going to stick with this, yeah. 
So now the next thing what we're gonna do is in the exact same way, we're just gonna go to effects, blur, and then we're gonna apply radial blur to it. Now we're gonna add zoom, but I reckon for this one, it's gonna be too much. We want the logo to be visible as possible. We're just gonna be playing around a bit, with it a bit. I'm gonna go with four and see how it looks like. Perhaps we can go a bit more. I'm gonna go back to my effects, radial blur. I'm gonna put nine, perhaps. Okay, this looks amazing to me. Probably I'll play with the colors a bit more. I love how bright colors can make a huge difference for something of like this because fun fact Phil Knight when he started his company Nike I mean it started as Blue Ribbon I, in his book he said that when they were about to launch their first make their first debut of Nike I was in a show in the 70s I remember and they his idea was to select something out of the box in terms of colors something that will stand out for the shoe box itself. That's how the neon orange that you get to see nowadays in Nike shoes are there. So that's because of him and I love that color. Uh, that's why I really also like bright colors. It looks actually gives it a bold look. Then what I'll be doing is I'll be just aligning it to the center and I'll be actually deleting this mess because I won't be needing a lot of them. I'll just keep two of them and I'll try to see what I can like create with these two so I think you know you can just play around I'm gonna put this one for instance over here I'm gonna also delete this one let's see if the circle fits in somewhere here I will rotate this like that maybe make it a bit more smaller not that small somewhere around there Probably yeah, this one a bit bigger. Okay, I think I'm gonna change the colors a bit because this one matches that one too much. I'm gonna select this one. Instead of white, I'm gonna put this one as well. Right. So yeah, so these are the amazing things that you can create with freeform gradient and radial blur. These are honestly amazing tools in Illustrator. So if you use them properly, you can create amazing stuff. Fun fact, I actually use this method to create a presentation of mine where I use the background and different shapes of this color. I'll also attach those images just in case if you guys want to create it. That's all for today. Hope you guys learned something new. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one. Tschüss.